thanks. <laughs> denim. <laughs> I don't know if this is denim. It kind of feels like it. It looks it's like, like denim. Yeah. We don't like plan this, green. by the way. I, I just hope people know that. Like this is yeah. this is unplanned. We no just plan. we just that in sync, Jaws, that we're able to Friends. do stuff like this. It's great. <laughs> you know who should be in sync? The coaches and their players. I don't know. <laughs> it, it, look, this series, each team. Uh, either team needs to win 3-0 or 3-1 uh -huh. to get that top four seed rose. They want to True. do it so they can avoid being picked by some of the top seeds, Dallas Fuel and the San Francisco Shock. I am 100% certain uh, the Gladiators don't want that scenario. Same with the Atlanta Rain, to be fair. Yeah. Glads, like Custer mentioned, have lost both to the Dallas Fuel and the San Francisco Shock already. So, you know, if they do get out of the top four, if uh, Shock or Dallas pick them, they could be in trouble. Yeah, that's not good. So there's a lot to play for here still, despite the fact that the Los Angeles Gladiators and the Atlanta Rain have both secured spots at the kickoff clash already. They are also both sitting at a 3-2 scoreline. So, yep, being 4-2, definitely going to put yourself in that top four. But uh, maybe they get to pick their opponent, because I'm not sure where they would fall in that top four. I guess it depends on how many maps they win. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see, of course. Uh, Gladiators, let's have a look who they're running today. A rather variable roster. We've seen a lot of different shades of purple recently. We do have Kevster, Padapan, Rhino, Shu, Astro. Okay. No uh, no arms to start us off. We are going to New Queen Street as our first map push being the game mode. So, yeah, no Widowmaker. Just Soldier Tracer, kind of Delio, maybe a little Genji. But uh, Rhino been playing the Doomfist a whole bunch. Probably see that. Yeah, that would be very interesting because we did see Reiner Doomfist and if Hawk on Atlanta Rain decides to run that Doomfist too, then we could definitely be seeing some messy team fights coming through. But Kepster and Patapan definitely need to uh, help out with the damage output when we are going to see that double hit scan come through. Yeah, there's a whole lot of variety what you can play with this DPS line. So, uh, yeah, expect anything, but of course, uh, kind of what's meta right now around the Doom. Right, let's go to Atlanta. Let's see what they got rocking and rolling to start the series off. Looks like a little bit of Kai, a little bit of Nero. Ooh, yep, Hawk there's Hawk. Starting. No Gator, unfortunately, although I did very much enjoy uh, <laughs> the Gator versus Hardy. One of the best series I think we've had all week was that Atlanta Rain and London Spitfire game, which was one of their losses coming in. That's They've got two true. losses right now against the Washington Justice and the London Spitfire. They've been training, I'm sure. They don't want to let that situation happen again. Ultraviolet and OG to round out the roster with Hawk in. I mean, Zarya play is a must. Yeah. Or Doomfist. Zarya or play. Doomfist here. We could definitely see either one of those come through. But I'm really looking right now at how these DPS lineups stack up against each other, Jaws, because I look at Kai and I look at Nero and I look at how much they were really able to push into those last few series. Um, it just it just kind of all comes down to continuing to, to work together as a team, uh, which is something that I feel like Atlanta Rain sort of struggled with in that series versus the London Spitfire. Maybe it was Matt Poole. I don't know. We're going to have to see them go back at it in the next quarter. Um, but here, Atlanta Rain do have the ability to prove that that was just a fluke. You know, they're still a top team. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, look at that. Last time meeting, they were in the 2021 playoffs. Wow. Wow. It was like a lifetime ago at this point. 3-2 victory for the Atlanta Rain. A long while ago. And yeah, it's funny that you mentioned uh, Kai. The desk brought him up at the very top of the day. His stats have just not really been reflective of what we've seen Kai do in the past. Like, his Widowmaker is insane. Like, his hit scan in general mm -hmm. is very, very good. This guy is just an aim god. Not the player, but just a, <laughs> a aim warlord, maybe. There you go. If you okay. put it that way. But uh, Kai's just not been able to reach the same point as he was last year. Like this guy, uh, when he's on these very long range hit scan picks, he is unstoppable. But the soldier, he's not really been showing off all too much. Looks like we are seeing Reiner on the right. Oh. The Zarya. Oh okay. my God. Well, uh, Atlanta Rain did just lose a right against a Reinhardt team. So Los Angeles Gladiators is just gonna come out with that because it worked before. I'm okay with it. My rider was stuck there. 
There you go, he's all good. Yeah, so maybe that's the weakness of the rain. Everybody's <laughs> found it out now. They saw Hardy crunch. And now it's time for Guardiates to push. Oh, no. oh, nice headshot by Panapan. Doesn't quite get to the finishing blow. It's quite easy to hold the payload, of course. The robot is the Reinhardt. Yeah, look at that. I mean, right. Reiner just gets a, to swing that shield around and stop a lot of damage. Yeah, a wall to separate the rest of the team, and now they can potentially run over Nero. Luckily, one of those columns has been destroyed, but that doesn't stop Gladiators gaining a whole lot of space. As soon as they move past this small choke point, they're going to be good to go until this next corner. Yeah, you can see, though, Patapan is just kind of checking the stairwells as just to make sure no one's going to go in and surprise them. New Queen Street, definitely a little bit, uh, uh, you know, funny when it comes to some of the angles that players can actually get with some of these heroes. Yeah, speaking of angles, Shu can use that window right in front of the team. Nice wall, finish up kill onto Nero. And that window forces Rain all the way back. They don't want to overinvest. Speaking of overinvestment, maybe that nano boost. It goes up to Hawk. Kai's used that visor from behind, but that shield in their way stops Kai really doing for a whole bunch. Picks up the kill onto Kevster, but can he actually stop this payload from going anywhere? He's so low. Healing station up in a couple of seconds, but he's all alone. The Atlanta Rain, they've scattered. Well, I say scattered, they've all joined the rest of the team in spawn. Luckily, Shu ends up going down. A beautiful pick off from Kai as he rejoins the rest of the team. A Shatter, a Blizzard to guarantee the payload. A nice charge in, but a beautiful nade on top of Reiner stops him from getting the pin and finishes him off. Kai picking up the final kill and the Atlanta Rain stopping the Gladiators ever so slightly before that uh, that first checkpoint. Yeah, at least they did it before that checkpoint. Otherwise, that could have been a huge snowball potential for the Los Angeles Gladiators. But Rain do have control of the robot. Now trying to match the progress, but Jaws, boy, do they have a far way to go to be able to match the Gladiators right now. And they don't have a whole lot to work with. Hawk just has the Graviton Surge. That's it. And so this is going to be big with a nade coming in from Ultraviolet to seal the deal. Even if the nade goes through, Astro still has that beat. Yeah. So taking the grab as the front line is going to be good. Well, they don't have a grab anymore. Hawk ends up dying. The Atlanta Rain, their Kryptonite. Is it this Reinhardt comp? Sources say maybe. It's possible. I mean, Shu is running the Baptiste, and so there are challenges that come with playing against a comp that has the Baptiste instead of the Ana. The Immortality field can be really difficult to play around because it does take a few seconds to get that off the field. But just like that, Gladiators are back. They've unlocked that first checkpoint, Jaws. Yeah, it is fairly difficult to come back uh, since you have that first checkpoint. Team that wins the fight first. Have to get the stats on it, but it feels like they end up winning the map. Graviton Surge in the back. There's the beat from Astro. Lamp's gonna get used. And it will save the rest of the supports. That window's good from the sidelines. I mean, this is all you need to do. You just tank that grab and uh, use the beat. Well, now you have to chew through not only the overhealth, but the immortality field. The Atlanta Rain, no feet to stand on right now. The Gladiators marching strong. Yeah, that robot putting in some legwork as that gets ever closer to the Atlanta Reign's spawns. They do have quite a few ultimates, though, so Rain could stop the robot here, but they've got to do it fast, Jaws. Dive in the back line, beautiful nade, hits three, and Kai melting the Gladiators with that tactical visor. A perfect charge from Reiner, cancelling it in the last second to kill Kai. But the rest of the team went down before he even connected with the pin. Hawk changing over to Doomfist now, Rose, to try and counter this Ryan comp. Well, it's working out better. Hawk did get the Meteor Strike online pretty fast, so that was going to be uh, helpful unless he literally just switched over. I don't know what I saw. We're going to ignore that. But yeah, the Doomfist is working out way better, and you can see that OG is also being able to help enable this pick. But playing around this statue doesn't leave a whole lot of uh, creativity. Oh, there's the lamp. Oh. Amazing peel for Shu. Used the lamp. The lamp didn't die. Nero couldn't do much. A solo hero play resulted in nothing. Kai still putting in a lot of legwork, literally and figuratively. Killing Astro. Really wanted to bump those stats up. The Atlanta Rain have got to rely on Kai for the majority of this damage. I like the switch over to Doom. It is working out. You can just dive past the Reinhardt, but look at Gladiator's ult bank. And with two and a half minutes to go, very, very tough for the rain. I know it's a long time, but pushing the payload all the way back. 
against these ults. Tough stuff. Big shadow. Ooh, cancelled though. Nice punch by Hawk. Stopping that shadow from going down. Four man biograin from Ultraviolet to turn the tides. Hawk does four, but it's a one for one as Patapan also ends up going down his shoe, fighting for his life in this room. But luckily, Reiner is standing tall. So Shu's got a big, meaty wall to stand behind. The rain is still pushing the payload, or at least attempting to, to get it away from the gladiators. But with how fast that robot moves back, the rain are going to have to try a little harder than that. And there's also only two minutes. There's really not much time left. Kai does get a pretty big pick onto Shu, so Rain should be able to capitalize on this. Yeah, look at this uh, disengage though from Gladiator's Rose. Instantly back it off. Well, they can't. Well, the the spawns are so close anyway. I guess you may as well just kind of give up a little bit of meterage and then come back five strong. Especially when Patapan has the Blizzard. Things are about to get quite interesting versus the Rain. OG doesn't have a sound barrier. Kev's alive. All cool, cool down shoes now for Hawk. Nice Meteor Strike dodging that pin. Will he go for a kill or will he go for safety? Tries to go for a kill, but Meteor Strike does a lot less damage than Overwatch 2 unless you land it in the center. Nice counter pin and a beat to follow up. Astro protecting the rest of his team. Dodging out of the way of this visor. Nano visor at that. Kai finds one, but again, this shield from Reiner just getting so much value. Nice pin. Ultraviolet squished. And the rain still struggling to make a move. Kai is still doing a whole lot of work on his lonesome, though. Oh, oh. Reiner with a Formula One esque pin does kill Kai. 60 seconds now remain. Well, that's pretty big, too, because while Reiner can't actually move on that because of the lack of health. Look at that charge back forward. Rain got a little staggered, so it all works out. Oh my god. A free shatter, double five strike, and Kevster with a final few bullets to kill Ultraviolet. Nero, uncharacteristically, misses that dash, just lashes straight into the ledge, and ends up going down to Patapan. This, they got 87 meters with 20 seconds to go. Gladiators are in full control. There's a tactical visor with a window. The Atlanta Rain need to find something big with this blade. Kevster gets slept, but it is up to the Rain oh. to be able to touch. Kevster survives with 5 HP, healing station down, and this is the final fight. Window unleashed. There's the blade. Nero finds one, but the immortality field is too strong. He does kill Shu in the end, but can he do anything else? Kevster on the flank with the visor. Kills one. Reiner using that as a distraction tool. Kills OG with a fire strike. And Kevster still alive and well, harassing the support line. Ultraviolet comes up big, but overtime is ticking down. Hawk and Ultraviolet out putting themselves on the payload and a beautiful charge and a wall to attempt to stop Hawk from touching, but ever so slightly manages to make his way over it. Luckily for Rain, the spawns are in their favor. Overtime might be here, but Rain are out of it just yet. No, they are not, Jaws. They still have to win at least two more team fights with Los Angeles Gladiators having these closer spawns as well. Rain off the back of a Meteor Strike and a Nano Boost have a far distance to travel in order to match that of the Gladiators. That is, they just one more fight. They're trying to find Hawk, but Hawk instant kill off to Kevster. Okay, go again, go again, go again. You don't want to fight. Kai putting up mad numbers right now on the soldier. Yeah, I heard us maybe talking at the broadcast. Need some some examples to back it up. So we're getting those right now as Rain continue to push forward towards this golden line of victory. But Los Angeles Gladiators about so to match him again. Away. Another team fight. Nice dive in. There's Astro again with the beat. Can the Blizzard do much? He's gonna just push everybody off the payload. Hawk is now frozen up. Good pin. Nice boop though. Can he survive that pin? No, he cannot. Reiner, hairpin turned straight into the wall. Hawk dead. Kai to follow the rain. Drop the map. Gladiators, one up in the series. A valiant effort by the Atlanta rain, but Looks like the Reinhardt comp is continuing to be their Achilles heel as Los Angeles Gladiators pilot that to success in this first map. <laughs> I wish you could see chat right now. Well played, <laughs> she's comp. <laughs> Sheesh. I love the smack talk. Honestly, just keep it coming. You'll love to see it. Well played, cheese comp. Well, well played. I mean, you lost to it. Uh, London yesterday tried to match the Rhine too. Rain are they gonna bounce back or Gladiator's gonna go, go on. We'll have to wait and see. We're gonna jump to a break. Circle Royale.
It's up next. The Glads versus the Rain. Yeah. Glads up. One map after Cheese Comp. <laughs> well played. <laughs> well, well played. we're going to Circle Royale, Rose. A few subs here and there. No surprise. We're seeing the beautiful man that is Space <clears throat> coming in. A little bit of Sigma gameplay. And we're seeing Arns for yeah. the Gladiators. Skewed, stepping in to the back line, taking Asher out of the play. 
Yeah, no surprises there. Uh, and we also see uh, Venno. Venno! 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 Hey! Mr. Venno. Not a new player, it's Venom. But uh, yeah, so <laughs> Widowmakers on either side for Circuit Royale. No, that makes sense. I mean, Circuit Royale is definitely a map we've seen a lot of Widowmaker on. We've also seen a lot of Sigma. And more recently, we've been seeing some Bastion? Question mark? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, hey. <laughs> I, I, there's no way. Okay, I'm not even going to entertain the idea. Um, we might see. <laughs> we we might like. But do you want to make Nero mad again? Don't know. Maybe uh, cheese pop. Maybe nah, cheese I'm sure pop. it wasn't mad. He was just messing. But <laughs> it did end up working a little bit. Saying that for the offense, but the the viability compared to something like a tracer widow or like a soldier widow or like even reaper widow kind of thing. It's, it's I it think, only works if it works, Jaws. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Go with that. Yeah. <laughs> if but, it doesn't work, then you better switch off fast. Yeah. I'm glad we're seeing uh, Kai showing up, though. Yeah, that's pretty That's He pretty was on the Mad Ting last game. 35% of his team's damage on the Soldier. <clears throat> An absolute shed ton of final blows to boot. It's good to see him perking up. And now he's going to go up against Arns if they choose Widow on Widow. Gladiators on the defense now. Yeah, we'll get his chance to see Gladiator's defensive comp first. Maybe playing around a little bit. No? Yeah, oh, no come fun. on. I was like, no yeah, I was like, Kepster, no. there's no way. Ooh, double sniper, though. Well, that's a little spicy. It's been such a long time since I've seen double sniper. Yeah. But Hanzo Widowmaker can absolutely work, especially when you look at Hanzo as a character that puts a ton of shield pressure onto a Sigma or a Reinhardt. But, but in this case, it's going to be a Sigma. Uh, and that can be really big in order to provide Ons an opening. If the Hanzo is shooting down main, that's where Hawk's attention is going to be, and then Ons just gets to go in and uh, click a couple heads from the side or behind. Two of the sharpest aims in the game in Kai and Ons. You had Happy in there. It's three of the best Widowmakers we have right now. Yeah. I really like this Hanzo pick, like you were saying, Rose. A lot of shield pressure. It's hard for Hawk to really move up. You have to make sure you rotate the cooldowns, just make sure you have the grass buff if you want to move up, and yep. shield to cover the rest of the DPS or supports that want to move up with him. Ooh. Oh! If you unleash an arrow like that, double sniper, yeah. I mean, do Atlanta range change anything? I don't think they do. I'd rather keep Venom on the Tracer, one of his better heroes. Yep. Give it, give it a bit. You know, I think Atlanta range do need to give this comp some time to warm up. You know, Gladiators did find an opportunity to get the double sniper to work. You can see the Sonic arrow as well, just kind of giving some intelligence over to the Gladiators. But the rain being patient. Kai is still going to go for the 1v2. This guy's cracked for the aim. Take the 1v1 with Arns. Arns peeking the stairs. Oh, not quite. Arns find the better of that one. Absolutely disgusting stuff. The Arns Rain have a lot of space to work with. They have lost Kai, but losing Kevster, while that shield pressure we're talking about, now disappearing. Now Venom's trying to go to the back. He's got the pulse, lobs it out. Doesn't get the kill and actually gets killed himself. Skewed comes to the rescue, saving Arns' life. Yeah, the rain have to go back and try again. And at this point, you are going to have Kevster back. So you can see Kevster just continuing to keep Hawk on his feet. Because well, what are you going to do against this? you got to really play around this corner, wait for those cooldowns, but Space is going to be right there to match you. Sides so coming up. Space is... A little bit ahead of Hawk in terms of ult charge. 20% or so. There's the Flux. No support ultimates, but a lamp. That is it. Arns finds the head of Venom. And Kai ends up falling too. The Gladiator's on a strong start on Circle Royale. Well, Ouch. Uh, oh, Taking names right now. Jesus. Yeah, oof. I mean, that's got to hurt too when you look at that Gravitic still... Flux because you had sh you had the, the poor uh, lamp. OG threw out the mortality field, and it still wasn't enough to save anybody that got caught in that Gravitic Flux. So, big stuff coming up from Space. 
Hawk's turn, though. Hawk has the Gravitic Flux ready to go. So let's see if this can also be just as big if you can bait out the Immortality Field from Shu. Okay, hands of his hands, so double sniper with a Sigma. Somebody I haven't seen in a while. There's the Flux Transcendence online. Ooh, and Kevster takes the head off of Venom. This is not looking good for the rain. They still have a double support ultimate available. Sights are uh, uh, online for both Widowmakers. They eventually fade away. But with 45 seconds to go, the Atlanta rain in trouble. At least they have the Transcendence. They can use that aggressively here. They also have the Amplification Matrix, which can help create some space. But Hawk is down again! Yep. Oh, no. They'll send back to the Cretaceous period with that rock. Oh, and yep, Kai dies too. Atlanta Range is struggling to get anything done on this first corner. At least they find one kill, I suppose, in Arns, but, I mean, Widow gets back kind of quick. Like, her effectiveness range is fairly high. Yeah. And all the way back. Double support all for Rain. They've got 10 seconds to go. They need to get back to the point. Yeah, they have to get back first, and they're even going to be coming back as a team of five. Double Amplification Matrix. Immortality field with news, Rose. Can they actually get there? I don't think so. Ooh, oh, Transcendence, I take it back. Can the Zen 1v6? Absolutely not when Kev's is on the field. Venom is on the point, hits the recall. Oh, but a nice accretion by Space. You see that prediction rock? Some oh, prediction yeah. rock. Oh, I wish the die. I can imagine the dinosaurs wish here. Uh, they had <laughs> they that level of prediction that. skill. I mean, the gladiators, uh, they've held first. That's a really rough spot for the Atlanta Rain to be in. I think a lot of that is just the fact that, uh, well, Venom was trying to get things done, right? With the Tracer. But uh, not only was kind of Skew just kind of chilling, he went in for that Pulse Bomb, didn't kill Arns, then Arns just had uh, such presence over Kai. Yeah. It was fairly even in terms of kills, but Arns doing what Arns does best, like 33 scoped crits versus Kai's 11. It's, yeah, I mean, it's... <sighs> it's looking pretty rough. Yeah, that, that's not, it's not looking great. Atlanta Rain definitely had trouble being able to get Hawk to, to push forward. And that had a lot to do with the Hanzo pick that we saw coming out of Kevster. I mean, even just take a look at this, this replay here, how much Kevster was really able to do in these team fights. Oh my god. They all predicted that. Oh. Oh. That was nuts. That was nasty. That was just Okay, nasty. there's there is the box, the golden box of victory, the a white box of victory in this case, because the glad skins. Yep. Um we spoke about it at the start of the series, Rose. Both these teams being three and two. If the gladiators win this three and one or three and oh, they do get that fourth place. They clinch the top four seed, which means they do select somebody. Yep. They end up in fourth, they uh, you know, they don't get selected by one of the, the top teams. Yeah, that, that could be really, really big. So there's still a ton that, that Los Angeles Gladiators and the Atlanta Rain are looking for. Even if Rain are able to pull hold here, they get the same uh, treatment, Jaws. They might be able to also sneak into the top four with a 3-0 or a 3-1. So it could be a 3-1 for them. Yeah, but it does depend on them doing this one fight. They're doing a one fight strat, like hold this final corner. That's true. And hope for the best. Just out skill, out diff the enemy team. Nice little uh, bit of movement there from Venom gets to the back line. Not too much damage done though, but the presence from space. And Arns already claims his first victim. Kai is dead, Venom to follow. Both DPS now down for the Atlanta Rain. Make that the rest of the team. That is a little bit unfortunate. Yeah, that one fight strap not working out so well. And the Gladiators, yeah, in a blink of an eye. Bit of anticlimactic way to end that map. Victory. I end up claiming victory. Put themselves on match point in the series. They do indeed. Gladiators, just a tough opponent across the board. They've had a little bit of a difficult strength of schedule, but even against some of these you know, more middle of the pack teams, the ones that are also going to be at the kickoff clash. They're proving to be a very formidable opponent for them. Well, can Glad's round this out with a 3 and 0. Oh. Very quick map number two. Not sure it'll be the fastest series in the West, but we'll see. After this break, we'll jump in to King's Row. Finally, an uh, excellent map. All right, we'll see you in a bit.
There it is, the kickoff clash tournament just around the corner. This is the final day of the qualifiers, and we have the selection show later on. Don't forget to get your tickets to the Overwatch League Dallas Fuel kickoff clash presented by Favor. Visit fuel.link slash kickoff clash and get your tickets today. It's going to be a good time. That's June 2nd to the 5th. It's all live. I cannot wait. It's a land environment, Rose. Woo! It's going to be a good time. Crowds are going to be cheering. Woo! Players are going to be popping off I'm live on stage. Best. So it's going to be <laughs> a good time nonetheless. Look, the Gladiators, they're 2 and 0 right now. It's uh, been a bit of a shorter series than I think a lot of people imagined. Circuit Royale went the way of the Gladiators. Atlanta Rain just couldn't get around. Well, they got around the first corner, I suppose, just not around the second. And uh, yeah. the Gladiators steamrolled them on their attack. Yep. It's been a short one so far. Gladiators have looked really, really good on New Queen Street. Obviously, we're able to do a full hold on Circuit Royale. But King's Row, Jaws, do we also see a first point hold on this hybrid map? Yeah, I mean, we could do. Could do. Different comps uh, or different players coming in and out, which means different comps. True. Reiner, Badabank, Kevster, Shu, Astro. What we saw in a map number one. And then we're seeing Hawk. Uh, Nero, Kai, Ultraviolet, and OG. So Venom is taking a step back real quick, getting Nero back in. You love to see it. Yeah, but it should be good. Should mean that we see a little bit more of the Doomfist or maybe the Zarya coming out from Hawk. Atlanta Rain did look better when they started to run the Doomfist composition versus the Gladiators on New Queen Street. That was after they had tried that Zarya first. Zarya could work a little bit better on King's Row. It is a little bit more of an enclosed space. So a little bit easier, I feel like, to grab the damage necessary to charge up that Zarya. Yo, or Gladiators could run Ryan. Like, they ran it in their first wow. game. Well, yeah, I'm just... First map. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I feel like Gladiator saw the London Spitfire a little bit and be like, oh, that worked. <laughs> okay, cool. Maybe they run the cheese comp again, Joss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, writing down some uh, strats from Chatty. <laughs> Maybe it is the Crypt Knight of the Ring. Oh, sure. no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, is. there you go. Look, look at that. Ryan comp. I mean, uh, to be fair, I think Reiner actually did get his name from playing Reinhardt. So. Uh, not quite. I have trivia. Okay, oh. Exactly. Ooh. I, I believe it's from Attack on Titan. Oh, you're right. Uh, yes, you're right. Yama Titan. Well, which makes sense. Which makes sense on like multiple levels. It does. It, it all, it has multiple layers. There's multiple layers of synergy yeah. happening in here. But, you know, Reiner, uh, yeah. Uh, big, big armored boy plays Reinhardt. Yep. It, it's it. it's okay. It all it all works. It all works in the end. But yeah, uh, that's that's probably not what the rain want to see right now. Look at that. Kai's immediately switching off. Get, Get off Ryan Lamau. Get off Ryan Lamau. Okay. <laughs> you can see Reiner oh, smiling. I'd love to see it. Stayed focused. Unbothered. Reiner knows what he's doing. In his lane. He's looking more like the Colossal Titan right now. Yep. The Glads as a whole looking like the Colossal Titan towering over the rain. Nice rotations from the rain through Hotel. Want to get onto that point ASAP, put a little bit of pressure on the back line. Sw uh, basically swap spawns almost. They look like they're defending at this point. Wall from Padavan. Can they get something onto Hawk? No, nice boot from OG. Kevster kills off Nero, who is potentially off to the side. And now they can do the classic wraparound. Hawk is dead, uh, Nero is dead, Kai is dead, Hawk almost falling over. Immortality Field goes down, Hawk burns it out, but uh, Shu is saving Reiner's life. And Kevster cleaning on up, Gladiators with a nice defense first up. Nero going down that early, you can't let that happen if you're the rain. No, I mean, that's that's going to be detrimental. I mean, even the, the bubbles are not going to be able to save you. The damage output that the Los Angeles Gladiators are dishing out right now, uh, you just kind of eat through the bubble, and then you eat through the, the hero. Uh, but Kai actually switching over to the Hanzo here. So we will see a bit more shield pressure now coming out onto Reiner's Reinhardt. But uh, is that going to really affect things? We're about to find out in this next team fight. Yeah, could get a nice little straight arrow kill onto Shu if he continues to jump like this. 
They're going to surge on forwards. Reiner is anti, and the visor comes out. He was shooting into the deflect, but the shield was eating a lot of that reflected damage. Thank you very much, Reiner. Nice immortality feels used. That nano uh, maybe could have been saved for the blade, but Nero does kill Padapan. Good start. The gladiators now, with only four people left on the point, you can see them all scattering. They want to get back to that archway. Wait for Padaban to come back. They can go for a big touch if they need to. Reiner's nearing that shatter. It's going to be all on this blade, maybe. Or just the grab. Reiner tries to jump in it to save the Lucio, but it was a little bit late to that one. And Kai finishes him off. The Atlanta Reign, they wipe the Gladiators. They claim in first, and they get the payload going. No full hold. Let's go. Let's go. We get to see more of King's Row. Love it. Especially because the Atlanta Reign are in a good position right now. They get a chance to get the payload moving. They've got the blade, so they can still go for a vanilla blade. Uh, but they also have the sound barrier, and that could really chew through a lot of the damage output from the Gladiators here. Yeah, no nano from the rain, though. Then they have the blade. Yeah, so vanilla. No grab driving combo either. <laughs> sad stuff. Sad stuff all around. Ah, uh, they got half. So easy for the Gladiators come to hold this corner, Rose. They have the shatter. They have the blizzard. Like, the dragons are going to come through the wall. Only hits one. Reiner posturing up. Looking like he's going to kick that door down. Doesn't quite get there just yet. There you go. There's the wall. There's the blizzard. Nice beat on top of the wall to try and save Hawk. But his wings are clipped. And so have the reins. They're halted at this archway. And this is going to be the biggest point for them to overcome at Rose. The Rhine comp is so good at holding yep. it. Yeah, and, 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 and it's super unfortunate as well that OG had to use that sound barrier against Patapan's Blizzard. And so now that crucial defensive ultimate is off the line. Nano blade. But hopefully this There's the blade. nano, there's the blade. The beat's gonna come out. They're sitting at the healing station. A nice boot to force Nero back. He is going pretty low. And that shadow from Hawk ends, or oh, shadow from Reiner ends Ultraviolet's life. And now Kevs are forcing the rest of the rain away with his tactical visor. He's doing a little bit of damage, but not many kills. They're relying on Padapan's walls to try and claim a bit of extra space. But with Reiner dead, they might have to rely on a little bit more than that. They use the window to try and scare off the rain, but they step up to it like they should. They know Raya's not there, so the likelihood of Gladiator staying on that corner when the window disappears is very unlikely. Patapan even catches a stray arrow on the retreat. Nice shot by Kai, and now the rain can step up. Yeah, and especially with Hawk having access to the Graviton Surge right now, you can just wait. Reiner's playing it careful, waiting for the rest of the Gladiators to come through. Going to use the speed boost to be able to make it up to the plate. But Hawk does have that grab. That's what I'm worried about here if you're the Gladiators. Yeah, no grab dragons. Stormar got used. I would love to see that Stormar used with the dragon, uh, the grab, so you can just burn through that shield. Comes up in a couple of seconds, but Ryan is just heading for the back line. The Grafton Surge comes out, and Funny Astro just donates Hawker's stats there. No one was caught in until Astro just jumped on into it. The Atlanta Reign, they whiff that grab, and they have to look on to the next fight. Kai, though, once again, still finding these random kills. I mean, he's playing Hanzo, to be fair, but... <laughs> Nice little there's, exit kill, but, but no they should be back yeah, momentarily. <clears throat> no, it's, it's it's good good stuff coming out from Kai. Unfortunately, Atlanta Rain not really able to capitalize on these random picks that are coming through from that Hanzo. So Rain at this point are in a pretty rough predicament. I they did they whiffed the grab. Now they've got the dragon strike, but there's no grab to pair that with. So you're really hoping that this Nano Blade can do something as Nero and Ultraviolet work up to both of those ultimates. They've got to throw everything here. 45 seconds left. Yeah, they can't stall out forever. They can use the dragons to create a little bit of space, Rose, and then maybe go in with that yeah. Nano Blade. There it is. It finds a little bit, but Padapan and Ryder are okay just stepping, for, uh, stepping sidewards. There's the Blizzard on top of Hawk. Beat luckily manages to grab the Zarya, and now they're just looking at this Nano Blade. But the Nano's actually used on Hawk to try and save him. Shu used the window and just guns down OG. This is a bad situation for the rain to be in. They've not really combat their ultimates, and the Shad is just going to end Hawk's life. The Atlanta Rain, they stepped up over the payload, but had to use their ults more defensively. There's eight seconds to go. That Nano would have been perfect on Nero's blade, but they had to save Hawk somehow. 
Wow, and, and you can't even get close because Kevster was blocking the path. With the tactical visor, you could see OG wait, trying to wait it out. But by then, it was too late. And that is where the payload stops here for the Atlanta Reign. Gladiators, all they've got to do now is get that payload there. And they have secured themselves okay. the top four. It's not a C okay. They're spamming C9, but it wasn't a C9. Maybe a little yeah, bit. Yeah, Astro's chuckling to himself. <laughs> okay. Maybe a little bit, but but not actually because Kevster. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are playing okay. really well. I like that. I like that a lot from Nero. Ready. Man up oh, and mirror. Man up and mirror it. <laughs> Do it. Come on, Hulk. Show us the Reinhardt. Oh. I'm sure they'd love Gator in at this opportunity to maybe go for that mirror, but... Maybe. Oh, man. Maybe. <laughs> and I, I absolutely love uh, a little bit of smack talk here and there. It's fun. It's all in the good fun chat. here. All in good fun. It is. It's perfect. But... Uh, wow, the Atlanta Reign, like I mentioned before, Rose, at the very end of that fight, oh, defensive ultimates. Yes. Uh, Ultraviolet had to save Hawk because Hawk was trapped in the blizzard behind a wall. Yeah. He did get beat, but still, a lot of headshots from May, and then Reiner swinging at him with the Rhine. But that they had, uh, they had to use that, and no nano blades. So. Yeah, I mean, I mean that that's like really characteristic of how the gladiators like to play this game, which is it's up to us. You know, we put the pace into these fights, and that's something that the gladiators have been doing really well for these past few weeks, uh, and are continuing to give it here against the Atlanta Reign. So you'll see Kevster just try to take this high ground and really force the Atlanta Reign to move backwards. That is all they need to do is really rotate, speed boost across the gap. Yep. Just force the people off the high ground. That's where they're most vulnerable is people shooting them down from the height. Nice little wall. Kai's going to be able to run away, so it's not too much of an issue. You have to be a little bit more careful of your OG, but he is Lucio after all. Oh. The Atlanta Reign take that as a go sign, and uh, Kevster and Shu were left a little alone in the back. And yeah, Batapan, you may be dead here. There you go. Nice reactionary play from the Reign, seeing the slow rotation from the Gladiator. Kind of slow, it's got Lucio, but you know what I mean. But yeah, no, exactly. It could have been better for the gladiators, but it worked out best for the rain. What is happening here? Uh, Lucio 1v1? Oh, Lucio oh. 1v1? Oh, they're in the Gulag. Oh, OG is getting put in the Gulag right now by Astro. <laughs> he even got the health pack and he's so scared. Hang on a second. Oh. Reiner now in the back. Astro huh? going pretty low. Yeah, he's getting focused out. The oh, shoe no. immortality field. Perfectly timed. Hawks the look on his face there. Yeah, he was a bit annoyed. They do end up killing Shu. Kai from afar used those Helix Rockets to get the kill. Ultraviolet attempting to 1v2 on the DPS. He manages to find one. Can he kill Kevster? Kevster a little bit too scared. I would be too. Ultraviolet this season's been popping. Yep. And he could have 1v2 the DPS line of the Glads, which would have been uh, slightly embarrassing. <laughs> Pretty He's funny. Not let that happen. But <laughs> Just, just a little fun. Uh, Gladiators do back up, though. They're going to try to go again. They've got two minutes, and they do have a third oh. of the point. Oh, no. Wall of feeling a little bit sleepy. There you go. There's the blade in a small room. Do you even need it? I don't think so. Bam, bam, bam. That's a rain. Uh, invest the nano blade in that very small room. They set up three ults to, to spare, however. Good defense thus far. Nero running back to spawn. Okay, just to get a little bit of healing. Not going to change off the comp, though. Nah, nah. I mean, that works out great because you are able to at least donate a little bit of charge over to Ultraviolet to be able to get that nano up just a touch faster. But you also backed off, so high ground approach here from the drain defense. Yeah, another engage. Wow, shoot, yet another kill on a support. Ultraviolet goes down this time instead. The beat was used by both teams. Shu does pay for it eventually. A lot less healing for the Gladiators to bear with. The Blizzard on the point forces the rain away. Shatter available from Reiner. The Shatter hits, goes straight into the wall as Hawk oh, just jumps straight over it. Hawk does help Nero find the kill on Patapan, but still the Gladiators are able to cap the point. So little point presence when Hawk does fall. And Kevster using the tactical visor, you're not going to be able to claim a whole lot of space on the point. The Glads get the payload rolling, but after uh, quite a bit of a struggle, three minutes for the Gladiators here. Yeah, that was a great defense coming in from the rain. And also forced out so many things from the Gladiators that 
They will be able to build them back up in this three minute time period. But at least when you're looking at this next fight, it's gonna be a raw out all out brawl. But what's this? Kester oh, on made. Cassidy? Woo! Oh my word! Ultra Violet, you gotta be happy with that one. Three man anti from the top rope. Yeah. The gladiators running back to spawn. But yeah, wow, Kevster actually on the cast, the Cassidy. Yeah. A pick you don't normally see. That's that's not a, a pick that's been common in the last few weeks for the beginning of the Overwatch 2 meta. So excited to see what Kevster is able to do with this pick. If anything, let's find yeah, out. The magnetic grenade still does a lot of damage. That's true. Homes in if you're if you get it close to somebody. A headshot and a magnetic grenade will result in a one shot on a 200 HP target. There's the nano. Oh, the magnetic grenade going a little bit wide. Nano boost on to Nero. He's earned himself a blade almost. He dies with it available. But I mean, that's what Ultraviolet wanted. You get the blade for the next fight, or maybe for this one. But Kevster just holding down the fort with two of his supports at his, bar, uh, at his back. You're still 225 HP, mind you, so a little bit tankier than a lot of other DPS characters right now. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you do give up, like, the healing station and just the consistent damage output, but Cassidy's damage is a little bit more explosive, so... I mean, they can touch. Yeah, they can touch. There's the visor. Easy S moment here. Hold S, just back off, no way. You fight that visor, and now you just open up on the yeah. corner with a window. All trying to go in, though. There's the meteor strike. <gasps> However, the beat. What? Someone type C9 right now. Actually, type C9 right now. Yep. Yeah. I'd be furious. Yep. Says the Glad's coach. I'd be furious, Lamau. Actual C9. Unlucky. Frustration in the rain camp. They joked about it being a C9 the previous round. But an actual one was pulled off. A slight curse for the Atlanta Reign there at the end. The Gladiators, just like that. A 3-0 and clinching a top four seed. Yep. That happened. <coughs> yeah, that happened. All right. Yeah, it did. Congrats, it did. Glads. A C9 to end out the uh, the qualifiers for the kickoff oh. clash. Glad's going to be super happy about that one. We saw a few different shades of the team too, with space coming in for Circuit Royale. True. We got the we got the pick show coming up in a little moment too. That is a very very like big confidence boosting game, I think, for the Glads. That's true. We're going to see who the player of the match is uh, on top of all this. It's going to be Kevster. We'll get that out of the way right now. Looking good throughout the entire series. Who's really shocked? Kevster's got so many things in his arsenal. He's been looking squeaky clean. The Gladiators overall looking very, very good. Their only two losses this season have been to number one and number two seed. The yeah. Shock and the Fuel. So they can be more than happy going into the kickoff clash with uh, that extra confidence booster. Like I said, Kevster looked good on the hands, though. Yeah, he, he got told did. that, you know, I thought you were better than that. But, you know, you got to play what you got to play. <laughs> His hands, though, looked really good on Circuit Royale. That clip specifically, the accretion with the arrow straight on so Venom's good. recall location. So nice. Yeah, it was so, so, so good. And then also just Kevster popping out with a... You know, the, the Cassidy pick at the very end there, I thought that was really, really neat to see. Um, and just kind of overall, just consistent damage output and gameplay coming out from this player. Yeah, absolutely. You just can't be doing this, man. I just, I can't, I can't think about it. I just can't think about it. That's C9 <laughs> at the very end. Oh, no. They joke about the previous round being C9. Oh. You can't do that. <laughs> the Gladiators with a massive grin on their faces, of course, going into the uh, kickoff clash. I mean, uh, it didn't go to four maps. They needed the 3 0 or the 3 1 to get that top four seeds. But have a look where they do end up in the leaderboard. I'm sure we'll bring that up or the desk will end up talking about that one. Um, I, yeah. yeah, I mean, they're going to the land. The Atlanta Rain, still, they're, they're going. Also, all the places have been decided. Oh, sorry, all the teams have been decided, but it was just the placing uh, for these couple of games. So yep. it's been interesting to see how each team is racked up against each other. I thought this game was going to be a little bit closer. I think a lot of people did also. I think the desk predicted the Gladiators through and through. So at least they got their Preds right. Um, 
No crazy stray prediction here and there, although I very well could have seen the Atlanta Rain taking this game too. It's unfortunate. Maybe they're rattled still from the uh, the London game yesterday. Not entirely sure, but that is going to be it. That was the qualifiers. We got the pick show coming up after this break, though, with the beautiful people on the desk. So we'll see you in just a moment. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Upper Deck, the official trading card of the Overwatch League. And by TeamSpeak, the official voice supplier of the Overwatch League. Welcome to the Watchpoint Post Show. It is once again, uh, of course, Casta, Danny, Zoe, and uh, Reinforce uh, joining for some uh, breakdown of the match we just got to saw. And we all expected something 
much closer. <laughs> Are you okay, reinforce? Yeah, yeah, sorry. It's got windy over here. It's crazy. It's like blowing all over the place. It's nuts. It's lost. Yeah, those boxes. So it's Gotta look out for that. Oh, I, I, it's <laughs> strange. Uh, either way, I want to talk about the match we just got to watch because, quite frankly, we all expected, or maybe just hoped for a, a, a much closer yeah. matchup. I also honestly did not see the gladiators leaning so heavily on the brawl, right. uh, but they look pretty good at it. And if they have that in their back pocket moving forward, that's going to make the gladiators even more scary. Nice to have. Yeah, nice yeah. to have. I, I, I think it was a good match uh, overall by the Los Angeles Gladys, showing some diversity. We saw Space come in on Circuit Royale, playing the double flex support. Who would have known that Kevster's also really good at Hanzo? I don't know. Add it, <laughs> add it to the list. <laughs> yeah, and Cassidy, just add them to the list. The, the list Swedish just keeps prophet. going. I think the Gladiators... <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, before we start hearing Johnny talk about the Swedish dominance in the Overwatch League, I, I, yeah, I just want to give props to them. The Atlanta Reign sort of struggling to deal with the, with the rush. I don't know at this point if it's psychological warfare by the Gladiators <laughs> of why they came out on the rush against the Atlanta Reign, but also just heavily struggled on this Circuit Royale as well. It almost feels like they don't really know what to do with themselves anymore, especially after losing to London. They look a little lost, and it's probably going to take some time for them to find their footing again, while the Gladiators looking to... They look like they've patched up a lot of the issues we saw from them earlier in the kickoff clash. Reinforce. You can talk well, about Sweden you, now. You, you may <laughs> you talk now. You, oh, I talk? Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, yeah, great matchup. I love this Reinhardt pick. <laughs> Like, genuinely, I, I love the Reinhardt pick coming in from the LA Gladiators. Because, Surprise. you know, well, okay, well, let, let me explain here, all right? I mean, if you're if you're a Winston team, like oh, no, the LA Gladiators, the you have two choices going into the kickoff clash. We've seen a lot of teams play the Saria composition, and it's very hard to pull off the Winston composition into Saria, right? So, if you don't necessarily want to commit to the Saria yourself, you're saying, like, well, I don't think Saria is going to be our strength going into the kickoff clash then you can just like move one step ahead and say we're going to commit to the Reiner composition instead because you force it it, it, it just creates a completely different matchup um, dynamic if you play the Winston versus Soria you're a bit like pressures on you to like execute exactly um, precisely and perfectly to uh, win with that Winston composition and well if you're picking Soria well you probably haven't had as much practice as like the Dallas Fuel on Soria but if you pick the Reinhardt you're forcing Dallas Fuel and other Soria teams to change the way they play the Sora composition. They can't just like exchange bubbles and like peel back and force Winston's in. The pressure's on them now to engage. They need to bubble their Reaper in and go aggressively, or they're they're facing the wrath of a Reinhardt hammer and a May who's ice cold. Like so I, I love the Reinhardt pickup. I think it really changes up the King of Clash nicely. Um if you don't want to commit to the Soria necessarily, and it might be something we see more of them moving forward. I mean, I think maybe Hadi was onto something. I think it was week one where I had the interview where he said uh, the brawl competition is underrated. And now we're seeing Gladiator finding success right now. Maybe going into kickoff clash, more teams will, you know, maybe use more brawl comps. Absolutely. Exactly as we thought, the London Spitfire were going to pave the meta for the rest of the team. <laughs> yeah, I think we all, we all, predicted, yeah, we all, we all that. predicted that to happen for sure. Now, uh, let's take a look at the standings to see where we all ended up with here in the Western region as up until his last match, things were still not quite decided. Now we have uh, the locked in and clinch spots. Nothing will change. This is it. Me, this is it. This is the fixed one. We can't get Got it wrong okay. again. Can't get it wrong anymore. Right. This is it. We just have to read. Custom. <laughs> no, no. Just read it. <laughs> There's no unless, Johnny. This is no, it. No, we're we're locked right. in. Houston Outlaws, unfortunately, falling out of the top four seeds. So they will have... I guess the freedom to be picked by these top four Florida Mayhem making it into the top four. I don't think many people would have predicted that heading into the kickoff clash. Absolutely. Now, uh, yeah, Atlanta Reign might have lost this match, but they're still, of course, right. in the kickoff clash tournament. That means they can fight their way all the way back into the top and prove everyone wrong. And you love an opportunity like that. So, uh, yeah, I'm very excited. We're the, the teams are going to have a few days, of course, to get ready for the kickoff clash. So they might change things up and might have new looks coming into that tournament or they just run it back. Like, who knows? Either way, it's going to be exciting. Speaking of excitement, we have plenty of that today, even though it was just two matches. <laughs> so naturally, uh, we got once to, uh, again to choose uh, our best of the day. So uh, let's just start with you here, uh, Scott. 
What what made you happy today? What made me happy? I think it's seeing the success of someone who has been around for so long. And I'm going to bring it up. I brought it up in the post show. Dia. 1,634 days. But who's uh, counting? Uh, who's counting? Dia <laughs> is counting. If you saw, he, he, there's an interview circulating, uh, circulating around on Twitter. You can just see, I guess, it's not even excitement. It's more relief, right? It's yeah. about getting that one win, and that sort of opens him up to have that freedom to perform because he's an incredible player. Like, he really is. He's been dominant in the league even when he went back to contenders. He's finally made it onto the Valiant, and they are looking strong on the back of great coaching from No Hill. So congratulations for the Valiant for the first win of the season and the first one in 24 games did you say it was 20, Zoe? Yeah, 23. 24 games. Yeah. 24 24th game is a charm. Um and, and congratulations we knew, to them. We yeah. told you so. Did you say told you? Told you. Told you so. Oh. Okay, listen. <laughs> I could pay for this yeah. actually. <laughs> Anyway, Daddy, what was your best of the day? <laughs> my best of the day. All right, let's. Yeah, my best of the day. Uh, we, I mean, we I really talked a lot uh, right before his uh, Scott's uh, best of the day. But yes, it was LA, LA Gladiators utilizing that brawl competition. As a Ryan player, I'm just really happy every time I see Ryan. Not only that, you know, Doesn't I think take much to, <laughs> yeah, to make I'm you a happy. Simple guy. I, nice. see, I see Hammer and a big dude. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and I'm happy for Reiner as well because Reiner said that he, his favorite hero is Ryan. Reiner playing Ryan. Oh, uh, Ryan. Reiner playing Ryan. Ryan playing Reiner. No, Ryan. Yeah. Ryan. Reiner playing Ryan. Yeah. Against Ryan. Against. Okay. What are you? I don't. Okay. Uh, anyways. Right. <laughs> and they had huge success. Uh, yes. And I'm really excited to see more of this actually from a lot of lot more different teams. Do you think it was psychological warfare against the Atlanta Rain? I honestly do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. After after you know after Atlanta Rain lost to the uh, London uh, London Spitfire, maybe Gladiators were like, I'm pretty sure they were like, Hey, but also, you know what? I think this might work. <laughs> in, all serious, in all seriousness, though, like when Gladiators had to go up against the Brawl, like they it's too rather. struggled against yeah. it. Yeah. So clearly, they they must have seen that there are quite some benefits to that comp as well, and the fact that top teams like the Gladiators themselves struggled against it that obviously goes to show that that comp uh, there's more to it Hardy was right all along and uh, such, a yeah, such, such a chat what can you do now uh, of course uh, Jonathan reinforced Larson he might not be here in person but we still let him pick a best of today so uh, what you got wow. for us thank you yeah really uh, <laughs> really appreciate that guys what an honor uh, super unnecessary I don't know here. <laughs> I'm, show. I'm just gonna start auctioning off my best of the days uh, guys in the chat you know YouTube you know hit me up on Twitter you know let me know what your best of the day is and maybe I'll just promote it you know if uh, I'm allowed uh, but uh, if I had to pick one space was in the lineup for the gladiators and he hit a nice accretion uh, predicting a tracer recall so I love seeing that here onto Venom close things out just like yeah you're going to be right there Turns out, bam! That's oh my crazy. God. Wow. That is satisfactory. And I know, Ooh. like, some of this, like, muscle memory from, like, thousands of our Overwatch, but, like, it just appears. It's just a tracer appearing out of nowhere. And then there's a rock there. I mean, it, it's he amazing. You didn't even to see the recoil. Uh, How do you know? Yeah, How do you know? Uh, it's, it's nuts. I will say, I, I will say, this is a take for you. Th that Sigma composition with double sniper, Senyara Batiste. Ooh. Sneaky, underrated, really entertaining composition. Everyone talks about brawls like Winston, yeah, Primal Rages, Breaking Balls, Doomfist, Silly Hero. No, D double snipers and Yara Sigma. Sneaky, very fun to watch. Big Widow will make your highlights. There's no double shield anymore. Urisa, Urisa doesn't have a shield anymore. It's just Sigma. It's, it's fun. Senyara, you know, it's fun. All right. I like it. It's just fun. And um, the green force loves fun. You sound you so unimpressed. It's like, fun. no. No, it's not fun. <laughs> no, good, I mean, I, I personally am a big fan of the Sigma comp. I, it was like, for me, it's a serious comp. Shoes are coming off and, and, and the game is on. And the supports have the ability to finally fight people back. You exactly. Know? Yeah. Like, it's, it's all on you. Really. <laughs> uh, now, uh, my best of the day, everyone, uh, is, of course, uh, that, that there is more day. That's right, because I did the math. <laughs> After the post show, we are going to have our selection show, and that just gets me excited, because any opportunity to talk more to our players, to coaches, right. to, to you guys, of course, and to uh, you know throw some spice around, uh, hopefully, uh, for the upcoming Kick of Clash tournament, that just gets me excited. And speaking of spice, um, we didn't have to wait long for that one, because uh, uh, you know some of the teams are currently waiting to be picked by the top seed 
Manchester teams, oh, such wow. as the Defiant. They're coming at the shock. Can they bait them into it? Is this a is this a trap? It, it, maybe maybe they like they want to play against the San Francisco Shock because they don't want to play against Dallas Fuel. Maybe there's like levels here. Uh, of, pick your poison. Yeah. yeah. Well, but, maybe they're just you know they're ready. They have like a secret juice or sauce. They, they, the, they got the magic hey, bullets Danny, here's against here's San Francisco. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't know, matter. Man. It doesn't matter, Danny. I'm sorry. It's not just gonna happen. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Fine. Well, we fine. will find out from <laughs> all the players and teams themselves, of course, who they will be picking. Uh, so we will be back with the Kick of Clash selection show in just a few minutes. So stay tuned.
Hello and welcome to the Kick of Clash Selection Show. We will be joined by all the qualifying teams and the top four seeded teams will pick out of the bottom four seeded teams uh, to find out who they want to play in the first round of the Kick of Clash tournament. All of that will be determined at life. Of course, the, the teams don't know yet whether or not they're picked, so uh, we're going to get reactions. Can be genuine love human emotions. Reactions. We love that. We love we're, that. We're a react stream now. <laughs> we really are. Uh, apparently, th those have been popping off. So uh, yeah, we, we wanted in on it. Uh, let's first take a look at the bracket, though, uh, to see where we could be going with it. And um, I want to I want to speculate a little bit before we get into it. Uh, so of course, Shock, the number one seed, they get to pick first. Casta, who do you think would be a, a, a smart pick for them? And what would be the pick that your heart wants them to go for? San Francisco Shock is like, a, I think a very fundamentally sound team in the way that they play the game. I, I think for the San Francisco Shock, like Washington Justice, they played the very similarly, similarly, sorry, to the Washington Justice. And if they're confident in their own play, they could choose the Washington Justice. We could also see, we just saw the Atlanta Rain heavily struggle. They're a team that's in the, you know, the bottom four. They haven't had good performances lately. That could feel like an easy win for the San Francisco Shock. It's really hard to know what these teams are prioritizing, comfort of the compositions or comfort in their own play. I mean, that, that's always a big question, right, Danny? Also, we, we discussed this already this week. Do you want to get the easy ones out of the way or the tough ones out of the way? Knowing, because who was it? I, the last interview that I did with San Francisco Shock, they said that they want to go with harder teams, mm -hmm. but then and then they were like, oh, Dallas Field, but then they can't do it, right? So I'm guessing San Francisco Shock, I don't know which team it's going to be, but it's going to be a team that I think they're going to pick someone that's a little bit difficult to deal with first. Get that out of the way and then make it easier for the rest of their kickoff clash. I mean, it's a good momentum to ride uh, for the rest of it too. If you know you got the, the, the heavy hitters out right. of the way, like that, that sets you up. But also, it's of course a strategic a good idea also to leave them in, have other teams deal with them, and then you can just... Uh, deal with the leftovers. I just had like this flashback of like Washington Justice with Decay coming in out of nowhere <laughs> as like the bottom seed to then run through. Like I just had that flashback. I'm like, is that going to happen again? There's you no way, know. right? There's, it's a Decay factor yeah. and you always have to factor that in, I guess. Yeah. So I'm, I'm with Happy and Decay on that team. But then again, that's where that's that's why we're so mad at the justice, right? Because they should be good. Like <laughs> they have the pieces. Now, of course, all the other teams, uh, they the, the the other three teams we just saw in that bracket, they they are they're lucky. They they can't be picked, of course, by the San Francisco Shock. Uh, they can make or at least two of them can make their own picks, and the, the last two teams just have to. Deal. I know. I saw the script. I know oh, who did? Dallas is gonna pick. Oh really? Dallas is gonna share pick. with the class. Houston Atlas. Yeah. Oh, how'd you know? Do you see the script too? <laughs> no, I saw a tweet actually. I <laughs> no, I mean, I'm. They have to, right? Dallas, you have to. You know, their first land, they lost. They they lost to Houston Outlaws, yeah. and they are seeking that revenge. Have that happen right now. Yeah, but then imagine if your Set first match you in in front of a home crowd. And you lose again. <laughs> again. Yeah, that's, I don't know if that's no. That's not good for your mental. No, no. I, I can't see it. Well, well now, <laughs> now they had, they had, they have more matches, you know. And Dallas is looking really, really good. And I think they. I just want them to pick. Houston already tries to bait it out. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah, I didn't see the tweet. Yeah. I was like, are you thinking the same we're thinking? I was like. Yeah. <laughs> Houston's just like, please, we need this. <laughs> I, I, it's it's interesting for me because there's there's so much variance with all of these teams so far. What we've seen, like we have Toronto Define in the pool, a team that has looked good, but they they've had some weak performances, especially with all the drama going on behind the scenes. Do you want to take a risk on a team like that? Because if Muse and Finale are in the lineup and they're playing well, they've shown to be a problem for some of these higher end teams as well. It's just so much, I, I don't know, I'm just excited to hear what the teams have to do. I'm glad I don't have to choose because I've seen Johnny have to choose in these moments of ours in back in 2017 and him. it didn't work out for him and I'll hold it above him forever. So I'm sure he will always remember without us even bringing it up, which we do very often. Yeah. Sorry, Jonathan. It's just so easy. <laughs> Such a low hanging fruit. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, the teams will be making their own beds and sleeping in it. So that's what you have to deal with uh, in a selection show. I would just always wonder uh, how how it all works out. Like who makes the decision? Is it a unanimous decision? Just just 
the coaches? Like, you, I mean, you as a pro player, like, how, how is that being made? It, it was generally like a big discussion of like everyone has collaboration. You got the coaches, you got the players coming together. It's not usually like one person is overruling other people. It probably falls onto the head coach at the end of the day to make that final decision. But it, there's a lot of different factors that go into it, and there's no there's no right answer, right? That you can never really. But there's also no wrong answer for the, for the situation. So it's like it really comes down to what you're comfortable in and put your players and your team in the best situation to succeed, right? Of like, you know, if I was Dallas, uh, I wouldn't pick Houston really? because that is <laughs> Dallas is looking like one of the best teams that we have in the North American region. They're going to go into a match where they sit down on a live stage again directly after the last time they did that was against the Houston Outlaws. You're doing it again in Texas. There's a lot of things that could go wrong there. As much as you could use that confidence of, like, we have our home ground, I, we are the one who picks them, it could backfire very easily and it could snowball out of control and it could also ruin their mental to losing the lower bracket as well. True, but now they're, they are on top of their game now, right? And it's double yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, they can roll it back. They, they now are warmed up. It was the first yeah. match of the season, so who knows? However, uh, a lot of teams have uh, reasons to be confident in their picks, and one of them, of course, is our number one seat and that is the San Francisco Shock so we're now going to uh, welcome in the representative for the Shock and that is Sam. Uh, Sam thank Hello. you so much for joining us. Hello. Right on. So let's get on? straight to the business. Okay. Uh, yes yeah. it is on. Great. You're looking great. All you right. sound fantastic and we can't wait to hear uh, here you spill the tea. Who will the San Francisco Shock play in the first round? Uh, we're going to pick Washington. All right. Uh, why is that? What was the reasoning behind this pick? Um, uh, I just got woke up and sent here. I don't really know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just... Honestly, that's, that's good enough for me. Are you confident with that pick uh, for your team? Do you think uh, that's going to be an easy first round, if you will? Um, I think, yeah, we're pretty good at the Monkey Tracer. They play a lot of that, so I'm expecting a good bit of mirror. Should be pretty good. All right. Should be pretty good. We can we can work with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Interesting. Um, in, in general, are you uh, are you happy with it, how everything shaped up for your team in the qualifying rounds? Six and I. Yeah. Can't, can't really ask for a better stage. Good. No, you really can't. I mean, it was a clean record. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's really Except all you can ask for. Uh, well, maybe New York. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, those. We don't really, <laughs> we don't yeah. really speak about that. Now, uh, we do have your uh, future opponents ready to join us. So let's hear from uh, the Washington Justice in just a little bit uh, and see how they will react to yeah. being picked. Of course, we on the desk were already trying to uh, figure out what would happen if it is the Washington Justice? I think you, that was your first idea, yeah. right? Yeah, well, I, I, maybe Sam, I'll pose this question to you. I, are you a, Washington Justice is a team that has struggled so far throughout the season. Are you worried about Decay and Happy? Like, they, if they show up and play at their peak form, we've seen them hit ridiculous highs. Are you just confident in your own abilities to match that? Um, yeah, I, I think we are. Obviously, their DPS are probably like the strongest part of their team, but I think we have extremely strong DPS as well. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you guys have someone called. I mean, you you're you're a great player, but you guys also have someone called Proper too. So yeah. Oh, yeah, I think he was, he was really good. <laughs> that yeah. kid, that kid was pretty good. <laughs> now, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, the justice backed out. They're not going to join us. <laughs> oh, really? nothing to say. Yeah. They 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 got picked and they immediately had to go and scrim Into and get scrims, ready uh, for yeah. the, for that match uh -huh. against the shock. Are they panicking? <laughs> maybe maybe that's panicking. what happened. We don't know. But uh, uh, Sam, thank you so much for joining us here. And of course, best of luck in your game next week. Thank you for having me. You guys have a great day. Thank you. you. Too. Yes. All right, there we have it. Washington first. Wow. Not surprising. Like I said, I said that heading into it of like I think Shock are probably confident in that matchup. Even if you know Shock is so good and so talented. Right. Like as Sam, he's being modest. Like their team is like filled with just great yeah, players. Right. Happy and Decay, even on their best day, they have the players to match that if they need to. And uh, how 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 do we uh, generally feel about the San Francisco Shock? I mean. Their schedule heading into the qualifying rounds, do you feel like they've, they've been tested enough? Like, are they the top, 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 top team? 
Is that like for sure, for certain, even though they're the number one seed? The only question that we have is, are they better than the Dallas Steel right now? And that's yeah. going to, you know, find out next weekend. Like, that's really like my whole test. But they haven't been tested by the Dallas Steel, but they, they bested the Los Angeles Gladiators. It was close, but they did beat them. They justifiably are the number one seed right now, and they sh they seem to have confidence picking the Justice. I mean, if it wasn't even even if they didn't play Dallas Field, they are six and zero. They're undefeated. The fact that they beat six teams without drop without dropping uh, any series is, I think, it's a proof that they are you know they deserve the spot. And I just can't stress enough how fantastic that is coming from a franchise, uh, like a championship franchise, but with such a new roster. Yeah. Right. So many rookies on that team. Five and out of six. Yeah, this is all five out of six. Like, I mean, that's, that's as many as you can get, really. Uh, that's fantastic. And they're still dominating in such a fashion. They just have so many good rookies. Like, and yeah. people who have impressed so many people, right? Like, obviously, proper coming into the season, everyone was very high on him, deservedly so. But, you know, Sam, he's been having great performances, filling his role that he needs to come in. Kilo on those hit scans. He has everything on lock. And I like what they're doing with their DPS roster. And then Finn, who I think is probably one of the leading rookie of the year so far right now, has been dominant on that Ana. So there's nothing to really fear if you're a San Francisco Shock fan. I know they expect excellence, and it looks like they're going to provide again this year. All right. Well, I can't wait to see what they have in store for us in uh, the kickoff clash. Now, of course, Dallas Fuel, the number two seed, right. and now get to pick Danny. Yep, it is. Now, moving on to second seed, Dallas Fuel is going to be picking their opponent for the kickoff clash. We have Sparkle on the line, or on camera, I believe. Hello, Sparkle. Sparkle, 선수, 안녕하세요. 이렇게 계신가요? 들리시나요? 안녕하세요. 들립니다. Hello. Hi! Oh, yeah, okay. Hello. <laughs> All right. All right. Oh, I'm super excited. He is—he looks very excited too. <laughs> really curious to see who the Dallas uh, Fuel is, are going to pick. So, Sparkle, I'm just—we're just gonna get right into it. Who are you guys picking and why? 자, 이제 시간이 됐습니다. 달라스 팀은 첫 번, 이번 키코 플래, 클래시 토너먼트에서 어, 어느 팀과 첫 경기를 펼칠 건가요? 누구랑 할까요? 저희는. All right. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I should translate this, but uh, yeah, Sparkle was going on a little musical singing vibe. I love Where it. are we gonna pick? <laughs> Toronto <laughs> Defiant. That's literally what he said. Yes, and they're going with the Toronto Defiant. Uh, Sparkle, why did you guys pick Toronto with the fight? So, Toronto to pick you. Just let's go. Why? 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 I believe out of all the teams that we could pick, I think they are. I think they do are the easiest pick for us right now. And we have Hapa from Toronto Defiant joining us. Hapa, what do you think about that? 자, Hapa 선수, 네, 스파크 선수가 그나마 토론토가 쉬울 것 같다라는 말씀을 해주셨습니다. 어떻게 생각하시나요? 아, 들리시나요? 네, 들립니다. 어, 우선 델러스랑 하게 될 거라고 생각했고. 스파클 선수는 지금 경기 나오지도 않는 것 같은데 너무 신나 있는 것 같아서 <웃음> 아마 유, 첫 저희 델러스랑 할때 이겨야죠 화나네요 스파클 선수 때문에. <웃음> Alright, uh, so Hapa says that you know they they sort of predicted that the Dallas Fuel will be uh, picking us the Toronto Defiance, and for Sparkle, you know he's not he doesn't really even come out to play anymore. But I don't know why he's so happy and so giggly right now. Uh, you know, and we are, we are going to Toronto Defiance are going to try our best to get the win. And I have to say I'm a bit angry uh, from what Sparkle had to say about Toronto Defiance. Well, I'm just gonna go back to Sparkle really quick. 자, 스파크 선수, 마지막 한마디, 고! 뭐, 경기 전에는 마음껏 말할 수 있는 거니까 저는 조용히 뒤에서 갈차라고 있겠습니다. 오지 파이팅! <laughs> All right. uh, yeah, Sparkle says, you know, hey, before the match, we could really say anything we want, right? I mean, I'll probably be on the sidelines rooting for my team. Let's go! <laughs> All right. 
Guys, thank you so much. I'm super excited for this matchup. Again, thank you so much. I'll see you guys in Dallas. 자, 이걸로 마치겠고요. 두 분다, 아니, 두팀다 화이팅 해줬으면 좋겠습니다. 달래스에서 뵙도록 하겠습니다. 안녕히 계세요. Bye. Bye bye. <웃음> I just love sparkle. <laughs> uh, how, can you, how can you be so endearing and entertaining and rude at the same time? You should make everyone musically announce their I, pick. Yeah, you know, make I know. it rhyme. That really worked for me. You didn't for like, expect no, it. For like, like 10 what? seconds, I was, in my mind, I was translating at the same time. I was like, God, do I have to sing like sparkle? I mean, or can I just yeah. say it? But I was like, you know what? Screw it. He's saying, I'm just going to channel my inner sparkle. I was like, I think it was beautiful. <laughs> it was absolutely beautiful. Now, let's take a look at the updated bracket so we can visualize the battle that is yet to come between the Dallas Fuel and the Toronto Defiant. Any surprises for you here? I, I am surprised that the Dallas Fuel are going for the Toronto Defiant over the Atlanta Reign from what we've seen of the Atlanta Reign so far. So Dallas obviously have some respect there for the Atlanta Reign team. It seems like they're just confident in the matchup. I would not al almost be surprised if it's the same thing as the San Francisco Shock versus the Washington Justice, where it's, they're confident in their head-to-head -head matchup. They believe that they can beat Defiant at no matter what they bring out, because Defiant have also been playing a lot of the Zaya competition and adopting what the Dallas people have been playing. And if you're adopting what someone else is playing, and then you have to play that team, it's an uphill battle. So I think Dallas is confident in their play, and that's why you know, Sparkle seems very confident from the sidelines. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I do want to say that Toronto, especially Hoppa, I've been a Hoppa fan, like these days, on his Zarya looked really, really good. So that Zarya v Zarya, it's going to be, I think, interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's going to be a fun match for sure to look out for. And we have, of course, uh, two more teams which right? get to pick their opponents. So uh, we only have four left. Where do you see those going? Uh, I think the Gladiators will be the next uh, team to pick. And who can they pick? They can and... Atlanta or Houston? Ooh, well, that, Atlanta who again. Going with? You just have to pick it late. Like, <laughs> you kind of have to, like right? Rocket, it doesn't feel like rocket science at this point. The Gladiators just I, kind of bopped their Atlanta reign. Atlanta doesn't seem to have an answer. They're probably just going to show up, play the exact same thing next week. So. I would assume that's the pick that they're going to go for, yeah. right? Okay, but if they don't, if they end up uh, actually picking the Houston Outlaws, that means that Atlanta Reign will be left uh, for the Florida for the mayhem. mayhem. Yeah. That is not a bad matchup for the Atlanta Reign. Right. I think that's probably the thing that they're hoping for. Because, yeah. I, you know, as much as I, Florida Mayhem is a great team, when you put the Gladiators at San Francisco Shock and the Dallas Fuel, I'm sure everyone in the law for is like, please let us make it to the end. Because, as you said, Atlanta Reign is a great team who yeah. have great players. They can match up quite well to the Florida Mayhem, absolutely. So I'm sure, I'm sure Atlanta wish they put up more of a fight today, maybe because this might have swayed the Gladiators' decision. Yeah, but it all comes down to what the Gladiators are going to pick. I can, I can see them having fun with it though too. Yeah. So I, yeah. I don't know. Hunter's also picking it for for the Los Angeles Gladiators oh, as well. Sorry, is spoilers. He just a, is he is he going to be the, just a speaker, or is he the one who actually picked it? That's no, I, well, I, how much I, faith I, do I have in Hunter pick? Team, <laughs> it's Hunter. I'm sure he walked into the room and he's like, "Okay, that's it. God, I don't care what <laughs> anybody <laughs> else thinks. I'm choosing my old team. Okay, <laughs> everyone else out. I don't care about what you're saying." I can see it happening. That sounds like an Hunter thing to do. I, I mean, yeah, the accent was right too. So <laughs> it all works out for me. It checks out. Why not? Um, where do you see the Gladiators ending up in general? I mean, now today was obviously a very dominant performing. They showed us a, a different look as well. How far can they make it? It is a double LM bracket, of course. So. The world's their oyster. They lost both to both the San Francisco Shock and the Dallas Fuel, but they were both reverse sweets. Like, Gladiators were in the driving seat for both of those teams. If Gladiators show up to land and they play at the level that they did today or that we expect from them with the sheer amount of power that they have in their roster, I could absolutely see them winning the entire kickoff clash. They actually have that kind of potential. Honestly, I think this top three, you can make a case for all of those. So, And then you have some dark horses out there. You know, Washington on a good day, Florida Mayhem. You know, they've been looking better than anyone could have expected them. So there's honestly a lot of talent here. I'm just excited for this entire event because we get a massive LAN event. All the teams are going to be showing up. We're going to have the crowd. We're going to have the fans. This is, this is Overwatch that everyone knows and loves. Like, this is why... I was a player. This is why people are such big fans of the league, and it's awesome to have live events coming back. And Donnie, you get to be there in person. I do. 
Um, it's gonna be a little lonely though, because I don't you. have anyone, anyone with me. It's just gonna be me. So yeah, if you guys well, see me, gonna and be everyone else at the event, and literally everyone else, and you have no, I'm talking about my friends. friends. Oh, okay. Aww. My friends, friends. How does, not, not about Johnny. Johnny. <laughs> well, I think we gotta leave this behind. <laughs> <laughs> I, think we're I will never Johnny. drop this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going well, to. He was sweet <laughs> enough when he came in, so I feel like he can be a friend. Uh, yeah, let's promote him to friend. Just kidding. And on this high note, we also are finally ready to hear it from the gladiators. Hunter is not gonna join us as their representative and we're dying to know who they are going to pick. Andre, how are you doing? Very, very good. Super happy after a really, really ridiculously easy win from Rain, really. But yeah, uh, the Gladiators <laughs> will be picking the Outlaws, for sure. Oh, oh. All right, all right, can you give yeah. us some reasoning? Well, I mean, if you watch the matches this week and you see Outlaws going to map five, like neck and neck, a really tough match versus the Paris Eternal, which everyone knows is uh, maybe not the strongest team, maybe like a, you know, top top 12 competitor, then yeah, I'd, I'd say that Houston is looking like the team to beat going into the first round, for sure. I would be absolutely embarrassed if I went to map five with Paris personally, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Well, and of course we have uh, Jake from the Outlaws uh, joining us now to, uh, you know, reply to everything Anto just threw at them. Uh, Jake, what do you have to say to them? Hey, it's fair criticism. You know, we we are just trying to keep it interesting for the fans. You know, get those maps. I got to get a practice reverse sweep. You know, so we can we can you know fill up to, to winning any situation. I mean, well, I'm just happy. I thought for sure we'd be on the other side of the bracket. We figure. We can beat uh, like every team. So in the end, with double elim, it doesn't really matter where you start because you got to beat everybody. So, you know, I, I guess okay. it's just a little bit easier on the side of the bracket. Yep. You well, guys. I mean, you're welcome because I mean, oh, I think oh, after oh, the oh. first game, you'll be on the other side of the bracket by default. So no issue there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's, it's, I mean, well, for our, our perspective, we don't care. Like, we, we don't care where we get picked or whatever. We're like just, I, would, I wouldn't care about losing the first game, game either, so no issue. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. Wow. You're mentally ready for it, I'm sure. It's good that you're mentally prepared because, you know, you never know how things can go on the live, yep. live land for sure. stage. For sure. You guys got really good players on your team, though. What? You know, some superstars. Yeah, you've, you've got some players too, for sure. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> All right, we have a team with really good players, and then we have a team of players, and they will clash. And I can't <laughs> wait for that. Hunter, thank you for talking to talk. Now you got to walk the walk, though, as well. Jake, thank you so yeah, much we'll for joining best. us as well. Best of luck to both of you. Awesome. Yeah, thanks, thank guys. You. Have a good one. <laughs> bye bye. I, I think we we need. Hunter is the most Australian person I've met, and I've, I'm from Australia. He's got the mustache, he's got the mullet, and he he likes to slag at the opposition. So I don't even know how I would respond to that level of. He just has banger after banger. Yeah. Oh, I'm crying. I mean, I'm I'm with Jake on this one. He's just gonna laugh. Yeah. Uh, what else can he do? Uh, and also, wow. all the sweeter would a victory taste. In case the Houston Outlaw is going to come out on top, like clip everything I'm oh, just yeah. said, right? Yeah. I, I love it. You know, we, we we always talk about it like we want teams and players to this bring the spice. Want. You want to do it this before the match. Want. There is uh, don't hold back. Have fun with it. Obviously, nothing personal taken there. No, you know, no. it's all in good fun competition. I love to see it. Now I'm even more hyped for that match. I I didn't really even care about this match up until I just started best. talking, and then I'm like, <laughs> I'm all in. I'm emotionally invested. Oh wow. So are we all? Some good quotables there as well. So let's take a look at the bracket again to see where we stand. Of course, that means that our last match will be decided by default as they can't be picking and uh, yeah this is a good situation I feel like for the Atlanta rain uh, I think going up against the Florida mayhem probably quite a dream scenario right. for them yeah yeah like we, we just talked about it right of like I think Atlanta rain gladiators as Jake said have an incredible roster and that's something that I think most teams can't really match while the Florida mayhem Atlanta rain definitely has the star power if they can get a good week's worth of practice in come back and find their own footing, they can definitely take down the Florida may Mayhem at a number four seed. Right, I mean, and also, but at the same time, we've seen Florida Mayhem also use a little bit of a, that brawl too. So yeah, someone after, has done it, yeah. Yeah, and after seeing how Atlanta struggle against the brawl, even today against the Los Angeles Gladiators, maybe Florida Mayhem are thinking about the same thing. So I think it's really up to Atlanta Reign to like really come up with the answer to that. And you know, that's probably gonna be what they have to do. Uh, coming into the kickoff clash. And I, I have to say, like, uh, now we're at, we just done, got done with week number four. 
Uh, the meta is still not like it's not set in stone stone, right? We still see so many different looks not even to speak of what's going on over in the APAC region Like there's all sorts of things nothing that makes sense is happening in the APAC region it's Not only love it like we actually love it But I love that the, the all the teams have an opportunity to really shine to have right. personality to find their own style And we have a lot of compositions which can support that It's also important to remember going into the next tournament cycle We've already had the the update from for the overwatch league. We're going into another patch so what you do here is going to be your last attempt at this specific meta. So you can come out with any cheese compositions. You can do anything. You can run the, the rush as much as you want because even if it doesn't work, you don't have to worry about, oh, we need to learn this composition for the next tournament cycle. All that matters is right now. And I think you'll see some wacky things come out. We've already seen the gladiators start throwing in some rush to throw all positions off. I think we'll see some more interesting compositions coming up. Oh. I think the Florida Mayhem is ready. So yeah, let's welcome someone from Florida Mayhem who is going to be talking to us about you know what how they how they feel about this matchup. And we also have Gator uh, from the Atlanta Rain as well. Uh, let's ask someone first. Someone, how do you feel about this match? Because you guys are obviously uh, the fourth seed uh, coming into the kickoff clash. Uh, 서머 선수 이번에 아틀란타 팀과 첫 경기를 맞게 되었습니다. 어떠신가요? 아 uh... 솔직히 말해서 지금 다른 워싱턴이나 토론토는 먼저 다른 팀에서 가져갈 줄 알았는데 솔직히 저희는 애틀랜타를 원하고 있었거든요. 그래가지고 저는 애틀랜타가 저랑 붙게 돼서 어, 굉장히 좋습니다 지금. 오케이. Okay. So I mean I did predict that you know there's other teams that are going to take Washington and Toronto. So uh, that wasn't uh, what I was thinking. I, we actually really wanted to pick the Atlanta Rain. So this just happened to be happened to you know we are in a situation where I wanted to wanted this to happen so I am just really really happy all right well that's good so that was a, a, a favorable situation for the mayhem then uh, Gator what do you think about that uh, was the mayhem a team you would have chosen if you had the choice uh, yeah probably <laughs> they're probably definitely the worst team out of the top four all right, Not there you have it. Not it at all. Just <laughs> <laughs> straight up. I like it. No, I like it. I like it. So where do you see yourself uh, or how far do you see yourself going uh, in, in this very tournament? Uh, depends if we stop getting cheesed, but I don't see why we can't go finals easily. <laughs> All right. I mean, Atlanta has done it before. They've definitely had some insane runs in tournaments. Uh, let's maybe hear it from the opposition. Uh, how confident are you? I'm, I'm I do want to apologize. I couldn't hear uh, Gator's uh, answers. That's okay. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> uh, well, he's, uh, he's confident they can make a run through the entire tournament. So, oh, of course, we want to okay. hear from someone uh, how they feel about the other teams yeah. which are uh, in it as well. So, uh, someone who's been in Gator, who's been in Pro Dari, and 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 who's uh, I was asking someone, you know, Gator said that they could take it all the way, uh, all the way and win, win everything. So I asked someone if they could do the same thing. Are they confident enough to win every team in the kickoff clash? So, what do you think about someone? Yeah, I think that the team is going to be a good team. I think that the team is going to be a good team. 이기면 아마 아주 다른 팀도 아주 쉽게 잡을 수 있을 것 같습니다. Alright, so I mean definitely uh, to keep it real, we are not the strongest team in this kickoff clash tournament But we are on a winning streak and we are feeling great I think if we get this win against the Atlanta Reign, I think it'll be an easy uh, Matches in the kickoff clash for the Florida Mayhem. Alright, so they're looking to ride the momentum there That is great to hear. Love the positivity coming out from both of those teams And we can't wait to see how far you both are going to take it. Uh, Gator, someone, thank you both so much for joining us And best of luck in your matches next week Thanks, Thank you. <laughs> up they go, and that sets the stage for our kickoff clash. Now, uh, it sounds like both of those teams are very, very happy with who they ended up with. Uh, some with more spice than others. <laughs> um, who do you think is more favorable? Uh, favorite? Favorite? Is that a word? Favorite? Favorite? My favorite? Favorite matchup? Yeah, sure, let's go with that. Favorite matchup? <laughs> I mean, it has to be the Toronto, Toronto Defiance and... Who, who was it? 
I'm playing here. Dallas Fuel? Dallas Fuel! <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Yes, but yeah, day. on that, yeah, right there. As we're seeing right now, that's Tons a favorite. The Dallas Fuel, that's gonna be fun. I mean, from that interview, they were, you know, they were pretty spicy answers. Hoppa said he is angry, so let's see if he could lash out that anger on Dallas Fuel. An angry Hotba, yeah. I don't want to see that. It's also like we've been playing online, it's like everyone's been like, you wouldn't say that to me at LAN, <laughs> but now they are going to say that to yeah. each other at LAN. Can I have so to? Yeah. That's it, you know, I, honestly for me, I, I wouldn't have said this going to Selection Show, you said Atlas versus the Los Angeles <laughs> guys. I think it's just going to be great bands. So that, that's the main thing. And they're just, honestly, they're two great teams. The right. Gladiators have had some mixed success throughout this tournament. It you know looked a little poor at times, while the Houston Outlaws, they've had great moments, but they're also playing completely differently to everyone else in the league right now. now I think uh, I think pretty much every single matchup here has the potential to right. be a banger, yeah. because you never know how the teams show up. I think a lot of those teams, like except for maybe the San Francisco Shock, have mixed performances. Yeah. They had their ups and downs already right. the last four weeks, and then honestly, like, whatever their whatever team shows up that very day is what you're going to get. So Washington Justice, like, they can make it really close to the San Francisco Shock. I, I, I can see the mayhem and the rain really going to bats there. I think that can be a very, very interesting matchup. So, yeah, I'm just very, very excited. It's going to be a good time. I'm so excited for my streak! I know, but we still have to wait a few days. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that is, uh, that is it. The matchups have been set. Smack talk has been talked. And the gauntlets... Uh, gauntlets rather they have been thrown down now i want all of you uh, to uh, make sure to tune in of course next thursday that's june the second at 12 noon pt for the first tournament of the orange league 2022 season thank you guys so much for